Meanwhile in Olympia, I see people who were born from here, families had farms, you know, due to bad trade deals in China, etc., etc. This was a well-spoken, really lovely man. I don't see why we can't focus on our own people here who are suffering. And if people want to say, oh, they're dearly, oh, they're this, then study history. Then study the Weimar Republic, where everyone in Germany was downtrodden and a mess. And, you know, I mean, Hitler was wrong, he was a monster, blah, 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 blah. But there was something about people that went from the gutter to having hope and that might have been hope in the wrong direction but it did get them out it was interesting to see that there was this kind of weird going too far the other way and history will do that it will go like into a Dionysian you know little Timothy Leary thing and then like swing out of you know control um, you know, I don't know. They say, you know, the 20s went one way and then the 30s became austere, you know, and then you had um, just different times when things go, you know, back and forth. And if you have something like just an incredibly huge population that's not being cared for, then it is a societal problem. It's not... Johnny made bad choices. That's kind of like an evergreen thing to do to just be able to release people because they're humanists. You know, it might be, you know, sort of one of the saving graces of, you know, the Franciscan order of the Catholics where they will love you. You know, they will see you down and out and they will care for people and bring them back. And I used to film the homeless in Olympia and Maybe, you know, the best success story um, that um, I came across was there was this guy and he was um, he was this black guy that was um, he was older and he was super alcoholic. And I even have some footage of him sitting in the rain, begging the police to arrest him. And they walked by and did not. And then I realized, wow, murderers get treated better than the whole, you know, this guy's begging. <laughs> And his name, I think it was like Lionel, I'm trying to remember, it began with an L. And people told me, you know, his story is different, you know, than a lot of people here because he had been a nurse, they said, in Vietnam. And that, you know, he actually had a skill. And one night he came to me, it was weird, and he said, can I stay at your house? And I had other people there, it wasn't like it was dangerous. He said, I'll never ask you another favor ever again, and I hope I never see you again. And he showed me in the newspaper that they were looking for nurses at Harborview Hospital. And he, I said, okay. He said, if I don't have a shower, if I don't look good, I know I won't get the job. But somehow, you know, some people had given him money so he could get the bus up there. And he came to the house and he took a shower and he, you know, I just said, you know, just sleep wherever. And he just got in a really cozy place. And he had a little alarm there for him. Like we set like a bunch of alarms to make sure he could get up and get the bus and get up there. And I really think it happened for him. You know, and so this is, you know, this this person, I've seen him before here. He's really soft-spoken, um, just a really sweet uh, person. So while they're having all these little, you know, care dinners and uh, Somali, you know, extravaganzas up in Seattle, and I haven't even shown you all the pictures of the dinners and, you know, and the care awards, which is nothing to do with the Somali thing and, you know, all of that. And just all the people down here with no chance, with nothing, and also alone, you know, there's nothing to bring them together for an award, you know, because I guess he's not Somali or something. He's not special somehow and it's just it's been such a mind 
bending experience once again to look back into the 70s when I was told flat out, you know, you should never have children unless you're like totally educated. That may have been wrong. You know, maybe people should just have kids. I don't know. But we that was what we were taught. And then just to see them bringing over all these people, especially when we grew up hearing, you know, there's pollution, there's overpopulation, there's not enough food. So what are we going to do? Bring over the groups that have the most babies per anything, the least amount of education, the most amount, amount of bossy pants. You know, they're not coming over here for any good. And I just feel like I've been duped. Like my whole life has just been one great big dupe. And I don't know. I'm mad. <laughs> I'm angry about it, of course, because I worked hard. I worked on Wall Street and did everything right. And these people just come over and get the big, big check. They just come over and smile and they've got the birthing centers there. They're setting up bird. They're not setting up farms and making food and growing things and doing anything. They are acting like locusts upon this earth. They don't have that self-awareness. They don't, I don't see any Somali environmental groups. I've always noticed that about all these groups out there from these third world countries. It's very rare you're going to see that. Very rare. I can't even think of any. They're always all just about themselves getting more money so they can, you know, get more stuff and get more money. And it's all about them. You know, oh, look at me, look at me, look at me. Not look at the animals in my country that we are so torturous to. No one ever talks about how bad these people are in their own countries to animals either. We'll talk about that another time. Bye.